All right, so in this video, we're taking a look at the iFlight ProTech 25 HD. So this comes in a analog version as well, uh, just the ProTech 25. And there's also a three and a half inch version called the ProTech 35, also available in an analog and an HD version. So this is the HD version of the two and a half inch with the Cadex Vista, as you can see with the actual the DJI camera. And this is kind of an um, interesting quad. It's um, not really like, so they have a two and a half inch and a three and a half inch, so it doesn't really fit into that three inch cinema category. And this is kind of a combo like whoop racer and cinema whoop type of quad. So they kind of are making their own little category here. So I did see some footage of this. Uh, they were actually demoing it racing around. And this is, um, they're both built on much bigger power setups. So. Uh, this has a 1404 motor for the two and a half inch and the, uh, the three and a half inch is interesting. It has like a 2203.5 motor, pretty big motor and runs a three and a half inch prop. And that three and a half inch prop is a pretty uncommon size. I don't really know much more about the, the, 30, the ProTec 35. So I'll link that down below if you want to check it out at, at the iFlight site. You can check out the specs. You know, it looks very similar to this in terms of the the form factor and the plastic ducts and everything and the plastic prop guards uh, but I'm sure it flies quite differently so um, I'm probably not going to be reviewing that one because they uh, asked me uh, which one I would like to review and I think that for something like uh, this category the two and a half inch is a nice compromise between um, a nice light Cinewhip that you want maybe perhaps to fly under 250 grams with a naked GoPro or maybe something you'd want to race around at a park or something like that. I think the three and a half inch is a little too big. It kind of, at that point, you know, it's bigger than a regular three inch Cinewhip and more like a, you know, if you're gonna be racing around, it's gonna fly kind of similarly to like a five inch, but with prop guards, it's gonna be kind of unusual. So not sure how that would work out. So I'd have to actually fly, but I'm not really that interested in that model. But if you want to see more information, check out the link down in the description. In terms of uh, this, and you know, of the 25 here in the Protex series, uh, they're all pretty much in terms of the frame and the carbon uh, plates and stuff. It's all it's the same: two millimeter top plate, three millimeter bottom plate, and unibody, as you can see here. Uh, 1404 Zing motors. They're 5500 kV. Uh, these two and a half inch Nazgul props. These are from iFlight. They're called a Cine 2525. So you can see the prop guards here are curved on the inside, but then they have this uh, octagonal shape on the outside. Um, the carbon is T700 carbon. I guess it's a little bit stronger, but lighter weight, I suppose. Don't know much about that, but that's the type of carbon they're using here. The electronics in here is a single uh, all-in-one whoop board. Um, I think it's the version three of their all-in-one whoop board. So it's um, just, I, I didn't take it all apart, but it just looked a little bit different in terms of the shape. And obviously it's version three. So I actually, this is the first time I've flown it, but they have the USB port, as you see, coming out of the bottom. You have this little LED light that's behind this TPU part here. So when you power it up, this lights up. You also have an LED here in the back. Um, obviously the video system is the DJI system here with the Cadex listed right there and the camera and then to get access to the USB port for the Vista to register it and or you know, to register it with DJI and also to do the updates. The USB-C port's right there. You do get um, cables uh, for the USB-C ports um, in the box. I'll show you what else comes in the box here in a second. And I think for the electronics, it's it. You got a different, um, the Albatross um, antenna here from iFlight's a shorter version. Uh, a little nice little 3D printer part here for the SMA connector. 3D printer part here for the back for the video antenna and also the crossfire antenna here. And the crossfire receiver is right there. Bind buttons easily accessible. And they have the crossfire antenna already mounted here in the back. Now, when I got this, uh, when you first get this in the box, um, there's a whole bunch of like stickers everywhere, like a like, bunch of warnings, you know, warning about this, warning about that. They're essentially, I guess they're kind of figuring out that like a lot of beginner pilots that don't know a lot about FPV uh, kind of get into this and they buy these things and then they're very lost. So they have a lot of guidance in terms of like, okay, you know, um, you, you need to make sure that you're uh, flying in a safe place and like especially for your first flight, those, those kind of warnings are 
like kind of just plastered all over this thing. So you just have to pull all that stuff off. It's kind of uh, kind of annoying. It does also give you like little little guides, like oh, plug in your USB cable here, and plug in your USB cable there. You know, so it, it's kind of like um, FPV for dummies. Uh, but it, it's it's interesting. I think it's a good trend. I think that's something that's needed more because uh, you know you get a model and it just comes bare like this, and a lot of people are like, well, what do I do now? And you know, having a little little bit of guidance, like little stickers and stuff pointing out what to do. I think it's going to be kind of useful and not a bad idea in my opinion. All right, so quickly, what else is in the box? So you get a second set of the Cine 2525 props. Uh, bag here with some an extra battery straps, some extra screws, and some stickers, you know, extra accessory parts. Uh, you get these extra wiring looms. I think these are for um, different types of receivers if you want to plug them into the flight controller. So these are included, but I obviously didn't need to use that because it came all ready to go with Crossfire. That's why I'd recommend is actually picking the version of the receiver that you use and it'll come from the factory already wired up and ready to go because getting inside here mm, could be a bit challenging. I mean, you do have to remove three screws here to remove these prop guards. So three on the top, three on the bottom for each one of these, and they just come out. So you can actually configure this um, without the prop guards at all, and just fly it kind of as a, as a two and a half inch or three and a half inch, uh, which does look a little weird. You can also flip it over into a pusher configuration, and I may try that later. I'm not exactly sure, but um, how that'll work out. But yeah, you can do that as well. Um, and uh, you, there's come like well, there's an option to get different prop guards. So uh, if you want like the clear ones, you can order them. I think the set's an extra $10 and you can see there's like these little metal, uh, I guess bushings or something in there to, for the hold the screws. It looks like it goes all the way through. It looks like it's a standoff perhaps. So it looks like it's um, pretty strong. You know, you'd have to break all this whole plastic piece for that to come out. And it is a, it's a fairly, uh, I think, durable plastic. That's uh, a tough polycarbonate that they're using here. So. It'll take some abuse, but I mean, if you hit, if you crash something, it hits something hard enough, fast enough, this will probably still break as well. They do include these um, foam bumpers here that are meant to go on the prop guards. They're not installed; they're just included for a later installation later if you want. So, I'm thinking like, you know, if you want to do stuff outdoors, uh, you know, you get the the this. I guess the these um, smoke colored prop guards are the default. It's really fine for outdoors because if you get like dirt or whatever on it's not going to show up too well as, as compared to the um, clear ones. And then if you want to do indoor stuff, you can switch the prop guards to these clear ones and then stick these bumpers on here. And this will protect things like furniture in your house or whatever from getting damaged by these sharp edges on the prop guards. Um, so you could have, you know, just basically six screws to on each prop guard to switch them out if you want to go from indoor flying to outdoor flying. And as I mentioned before, you do get two USB cables, a micro USB and a USB-C uh, for the flight controller and for the Vista. All right, so this is how much it weighs. And see if we can get on here. It's about 201 grams. So yeah, it's, a, it's pretty hefty. So I flew it around with their recommended battery, the uh, 854S. And this is how much it comes in. 299.9, so 300 grams with the recommended um, battery. So if you do want to get this under uh, 250 grams all up, you'll have to obviously keep it to like a 50, 50 gram battery, which is probably something much smaller, like a 450 4S, and your flight time is going to be shorter as well. They're saying like, um, I forget it was like eight, seven, eight minutes on an 850, but I got more like six and a half minutes. So although it was kind of flying a little bit faster, You'll see that at the end of the video. Um, you know, of course, it really depends on how you fly. You know, if you fly faster, harder, your flight time's gonna be shorter. If you're just cruising around, hovering, it's probably gonna be longer. So um, there's no fixed flight time for a battery. It really depends on your flying style. Now the tune that came on here from the factory, I think was really meant for something of this weight. So it's kind of tuned for around 300 grams. Uh, if you go lighter, it's probably gonna be a little bit wobbly. Um, in terms of the pit tune, if you go heavier, which you can do for a longer flight time, uh, it'll probably uh, feel very sluggish because I think at, uh, at this weight here, the 1404 motor is probably at its maximum limit. It's definitely 
on the heavier side, in my opinion, for something of this sort of category at two and a half inches. Uh, ideally, the 1404 motor on a two and a half inch prop uh, will do better closer to around 250 grams all up weight, but they're quite a bit over here with the recommended battery. But you know, if you're not flying too hard or not doing a lot of acro, you know, just you know, cruising around really fast, maybe like just doing some Cinewhip chasing that kind of thing, you're gonna get some you know six six and a half minute flights on the 850 um, in this setup here, and flies really well out of the box. Anyway, I think that's gonna do it for this video. I'll go ahead and show you the flight footage now. But yeah, go ahead and let me know what you guys think of this new and interesting category that I think I thought it's trying to launch here. And what you would you call the Cinewhip racing? And <laughs> that would be kind of a interesting way of putting it. But yeah, that's kind of what I think this is. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. So I'm flying this totally stock, uh, stock rate, stock pit tune, everything. I uh, came pit tuned from the factory, uh, pretty much like all the iFlight products do nowadays. Just bound up the crossfire receiver and my goggles, of course. And this is kind of, uh, they're kind of, I don't know, intending this one to be flown a little bit faster. So I'm, I'm actually not running a GoPro on here at the moment. And not a lot of wind, but I want to see how this performs, just flying it kind of fast. It's not super loud, but not terribly quiet either. Yeah, this is hands off. Just want to see uh, what it's like when in the, there's nothing interacting with it or no stick control. A little bit of wind coming from this direction where I'm facing. So this is totally hands off here. It's really rock steady. A little bit of drifting just from the wind. Of course, you know, I'm flying in acro mode, not angle mode. I uh, can do a little acro with it, surprisingly. Ah, there's a little bit of prop wash out there. I'm going to try to do a split us. You can hear the props kind of overreact. This is that's mostly due to the ducks right there. So you got to pull out uh, earlier of the of the dive, and you can't, you can't wait to the last second to. Uh, pump up your throttle real quick, otherwise you'll get that uh, prop wash or the washout, the all washout. Wasn't too bad. All right, so that no desync or anything like this. Is a new uh, flight control. It's like the version three of their whoop flight controllers. I haven't flown this one yet. The first time I've seen it. Very, very responsive. I need to put some extra on, on the roll axis. I don't really hear any tuning issues or vibrations or anything like that. Tune seems pretty decent. I am running a 4S850 like they're recommending. That's that Kodar uh, lipo that I've, I got a bunch of those a while back. Yeah, it's very nice. I, I did see some uh, promotion video for my play. They were racing these and I can definitely see why they were doing that and handle it no problem. So maybe this is kind of one of those uh, Cinewhoop by day, racer by night or something like that. They're always trying to come up with new concepts.
Yeah, the rolls, the rolls are pretty, but you can do the lacquer. And then I'll, I will put a naked GoPro on here. Oh, I hit a hit a branch. Put a naked GoPro on here. I don't think, I think it's going to matter too much for performance. It's going to be a little bit more weight, but this is already fairly heavy. But 30, 13 or 3 meters and uh, this forest battery, no problem. And they're staying 7 to 8 minutes on an 850. I'm already at five minutes, 14.4 gold. So I'm thinking more like six to seven minutes. Maybe if you're just cruising around, seven to eight minutes would be doable. Let's just see here. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna cruise here for the last part of the battery. Let's see if I can squeeze out a little bit of more flight time here. Ah. I hear the uh, low low voltage alarm. There it goes. I'm at it suddenly dropped to 13.8. Oops. 